What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube world? This is Chris, and of course, this is my channel, Barnon 11970 Thank you, as always, for checking out my video. All right, guys, what I wanted to talk about is I wanted to do a part two of the religion. Um, I got a great response from people, even the people that are very religious. They were respectful. Um, there were no people saying, you're going to die and burn in hell, and we're going to kill you, and we hate you because we don't believe in the same thing that we do. People actually talked about it. So I'm going to talk a little bit further about it. And again, I want people to try and take the emotion out of it. Because on my channel, I'm here to try and help people and try and show them alternative views so you can make a choice. And the thing about programming is they teach you when you're young. They get you to constantly be believing in something and an agenda where you're not supposed to question it. Now, one of the biggest things I saw that people that are highly into their religious beliefs, is one of the things that people will say is, well, if you read the Bible, it says this, this, and this. Now, what people have to keep in mind is, can we first say, first of all, can we all agree that man is easily corruptible? Can we agree on that? Considering how many wars we've had throughout history, how many people have been murdered, and how many people have died, and how many people steal... I can pretty much safely say that everybody that answers that sees that question will answer it, yes, man is easy, easily corruptible. Well, as far as we know, man not only wrote the Bible, but passed it on from generation to generation, where people with certain agendas either took things out of the Bible, put things in, or misinterpreted the meanings of of certain words. From the things that I've researched, I've learned, in my humble opinion, is that the Bible is not meant to be taken literally. Now, again, I'm, I'm trying not... Please bear with me if you're a religious person. Watch this whole video before you comment. I know your first response is going to be, oh, i got to say something right now. Listen to the things I have to say and use logic to put it in perspective. I'm not trying to change anybody. I'm just trying to show alternative viewpoints so you have a choice with an agenda they teach you this is the way and that's it and nothing in life is a straight line so when you talk about saying well the bible says this and the bible says that well first you have to say which edition of the bible because there are so many different variations are we talking about including the dead sea scrolls which are actually written before the bible are we talking about the new testament the old testament are we talking about a Catholic Bible? Are we talking about a Jewish Bible? I'm not sure if they call it a Bible. I'm not Jewish. But what I'm saying is there are different variations. But they were all written by man. And since kings and the church were in charge of writing those very books, because even throughout most of history, the majority of people, even some kings, could not read and write. It was the church that was the ones that made the laws. And if we see things like the Spanish Inquisition, when we look at the holy wars, the Crusades, we can see that a lot of wars and a lot of death and a lot of murders and a lot of stealing of wealth has come in the hands of religious people. We'll just put it that way. And the very people that have been condemning the people for the longest time are the ones writing the information in those books. People are corruptible. It's an unfortunate fact. Some more than others. I mean, some people will take a bribe to, you know, let somebody on an extra ride at the Ferris wheel. There are some people that'll take a bribe to not pass a law. There's some people that'll take a bribe to murder someone. So there's different degrees. We're all guilty of something. But it's the level. So when you talk about a book that was written by man, how do you know how accurate it is? And how do you know they, because they, they've said, even people that research the Bible have said on several occasions, there's a lot of words that are hard to interpret when you're transferring it from one language to another. And another thing you have to consider is, is a word called slang. Where let's say, for example, I write a book and it gets buried in the desert for 10,000 years. And in that time frame, the English language hasn't been spoken in, let's say, a thousand years. 
and somebody comes along and finds that book and tries to decipher each word. Now, let's say one of the things I wrote in the book is saying that, um, let's just say I said somebody is a dirty rat. Now, in our terms, in our days, a dirty rat would say a traitor, somebody that's a snitch. We would know what it meant. Well, if they're trying to decipher it and they take the words literally, well, they might think, well, is he talking about an actual giant-sized rat that was unclean? So, I mean, as silly as that may sound, certain phrases that we say now, we take for granted that a thousand years from now, if they don't speak that language anymore, they would interpret it as literal. So we could be doing that the same. So we can all say that man is corruptible. Man is the one that wrote the book, the Bible. They've rewritten it. They've taken out pages. I mean, this is not arguable. This is fact. So with that being said, you can't trust everything that's written in there because it depends on what king or what pope was in charge at that time in that century where they decided, okay, this is going to be eliminated from the Bible. This is going to be placed into the Bible. This is going to be rewritten. So it's not like we're born and then all of a sudden there's a bright light in the sky and down comes a book on a beam of light and you hear a voice say, this is my word. This is what I've created. Follow it. Because despite the passion that people have, despite the amount of amazing belief of strength that you have in your faith, you cannot prove that everything that you've been told has happened or is accurate. Because none of you have a video with you and God. Now, I'm not saying, like I said, I, I've, I'm not saying there isn't a God. Because first of all, God, the word God is not a name. It's a title. Because like, for example, if you asked what my name was, I don't say human. I would say my name is Chris. So God is nothing more than a description of what something is. When you look at, for example, and somebody made a good point about this. If you look at symbolism, and I have plenty of videos that talk about symbolism. One of the things you will see, the Christian symbol for Jesus is the IHS they write it a little kind of weird. This is the symbol for Jesus. Even though that's an, it's supposed to be an I, I've, I've checked into it. A lot of them have the Y. So even the I, it's irrelevant. But the middle, you see the cross, and then that wave, and then a little wavy thing, that's an S. That's the symbol for Jesus. It stands for Lessus Hominum Salvator, which translated is Jesus Savior of man. Now, I want you to pay attention to that middle symbol. I always talk about planets and how we are part of a system that people worship. That's why they always look at the skies as above, so below. This right here is the symbol for the planet Saturn. Saturn, the one with the halo around it, the one that has the hexagram on top. You know what a hexagram is? Let me write that down. This is a hexagram. You could put a five-pointed star in that hexagram. Google hexagram on Saturn, and you will see the actual image that on the top of Saturn, where it has the halo around the center, you look in the northern pole of Saturn, there is a natural formation that's a hexagon, or a hex. They're talking and they're showing this is the sign for Jesus. Look at this, the middle symbol. Here is the sign for Saturn or Satan. So they're telling you through symbolism who their God really is. And unfortunately, it's not what you think. That's why you see the symbol for Satan. You haven't seen the, you know, they show the goat, but they show it in the five pointed star. Well, that fits exactly perfect in a hexagram. 
which is on Saturn. And that's why you see the priests that worship Satan, are, they wear black robes. Here's another funny thing that you may or may not know. The You ever hear the book of Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus? I want to show you something. You should be very familiar with these symbols. You ever go into a man's bathroom? You see this? Ever see this symbol? The women's bathroom? Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? This is the symbol for Mars. And this is the symbol for Venus. You could look it up. Look at the symbols for planets. So, another thing that you might not know about. The days of the week all have to do with the planets. Now, some of them are easy. You have Sunday for the sun, Monday for the moon, Thursday is Thor, Thor's day, which has to do, I think it's either Jupiter or Saturn, I'm not sure, but you have, oh, no, it's, it's Jupiter because Saturday would be for Saturn, Satan, but you have the others, you'll say, well, it doesn't sound right in, Amer in English. Well, if you look up Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if you look them up in Spanish or Italian, you'll see things like Mercad, Mercadad. I don't know how they're pronounced, but they're the planets. They're talking about the seven known visible planets at the time. And when they talk about the sun being the sun of the light of the world, well, they're not talking S-O-N, they're talking S-U-N. Because if you even read the Bible... It says that God says, I am the light of the world. And he created us in his image. So what they're saying is symbolically that everything comes from the one of the spectrum of light. And we're all made in God's image. In other words, we're all light. Well, last time you checked, if you look at a science book, they're talking about how we're made of atoms. Well, atoms are nothing more than light particles. And you know how they say we all come from one. These, these are things to think about. The word amen or amen, people are very, very familiar with that. But most people don't know where that comes from. There was an Egyptian sun god. By the way, I find it funny that's the sun god. Which, by the way, here is the symbol for the sun. What does that look like to you? Does that look like an eye? Know the whole Illuminati thing where they have the eye at the top? The sun. The light of the world coming from the heavens. Think about that. So, unfortunately, a lot of people have a passion for something that they've been programmed to believe. Now, I'm not saying there is not a creator, but it's not the way that they try and tell you it is. And when they talk about things like, you know, I, I shall go to the land and I shall call it, uh, what is it, the land of God and I should call it pineal? Well, have you ever heard of your pineal gland? And they say things like, if your eye be single, let it fill with light. Your single eye, your third eye. Well, what about the temples? What are these called? They're talking the right side, the right side of the right hand of God. Throw your net to the right side. They're talking about the right hemisphere of your brain. Jacob's ladder. If you look at a medical symbol, you'll see what looks like a spinal cord with two snakes intertwining all the way up, which is also the, sh the, the shape of our DNA, what we're made of. Climbing Jacob's ladder. These are things people need to check. And even look at the creation. If you just look at Genesis itself, they talk about how that God created man. They said God created man in our image. Not God created man in his image. Now, that could be a misinterpretation. Let's be fair. But if not, our says more than one. Think about that. And when they, when they And you could read this. Look at your Genesis Bible. The very religious people. Look at this stuff. When you talk about things, like in, also in Genesis, where they say they created Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. Well, what does replenish mean? 
It means to do over. So how could Adam and Eve be the first people on the planet, on planet Earth, if they're replenishing it? Again, that could be misinterpretation. But then that shows there's a flaw in the writing of the Bible because it was written by man and man is flawed. Here's another interesting little tidbit you should check into when it comes to the whole Genesis thing. We all know the story about Adam and Eve. Well, here's some funny parts. One of the symbols of God is the infinity sign because it goes on forever. God is everything. Okay? Now, in, in Genesis, they talk about how they took a rib out of Adam and created Eve. Or it could be the other way around. I'm not really sure. So forgive me if I get it uh, wrong. It's not meant to be taken literally. Yeah, they take a, a, a rib out of Adam and they created Eve. It's not meant to be taken literally. Because if you know anything about the reproductive, reproductive system, when the sperm first fertilizes the egg, you have a single cell. And what does that look like? Coincidentally enough, that's what the, the initial fertilized egg looks like. Hmm, what's that the symbol of? The symbol of the sun. Now, what happens once the egg is fertilized? What does it do? It splits into two. And then it continues to go from there, thus creating life. So if you were trying to send messages throughout history, because we know that when people go against the grain and try and speak up, they all get murdered. I mean, look at people like Malcolm X. Look at people like um, John um, Martin Luther the King, all the famous historians, people that, John F. Kennedy, people that speak up, John Lennon. Even recently, like Michael Jackson, he was actually talking about the Illuminati and stuff like that. He was talking about the corruption and the, of the control in the music industry. People that speak up throughout history tend to be silenced. They're either imprisoned, like somebody like Galileo, for speaking up and saying that the world is not flat, it's round, or they'll be murdered. So if you want to send information out and not get murdered for doing it, you have to do it in symbolism. And like it or not, the Bible, if you interpret it literally, is just a story. So you could pass it on. But it's basically a science book, because if you think about the story of Adam and Eve, well, they're talking about symbolisms that life begins with the splitting of an atom. In other words, a single cell that keeps dividing. And what does the double cell look like? Pretty much looks like that. It starts pulling apart. Coming all comes from one. So in other words, symbolism of the single cell dividing. All comes from one. I am the light of the world. So if you were to write a story and you were trying to teach people a science lesson that was written thousands of years ago, that they knew that life began the splitting of the atom from a single-celled organism into a, a, a double cell, and then it continued from there, creating the flower of life, and you didn't want to get murdered for this, you had to make it a story. So what better name to call the guy? He could have called the guy Fred, or Jonathan, or Bill, or... So Socrates or whatever, they choose to name him Adam. Could it be a coincidence? It sure can, but that is kind of funny if you think about it. Here's another one to think about. If you read the story about, we all know about how the fact that Eve was the one that was responsible for creating original sin because she ate from the apple of the tree of life. Now, if you read that part in the Bible, they talk about the fact that God said to Eve, Basically, I'm not going to quote because I don't have it memorized, but God told Eve, you cannot eat, you can eat from any tree in paradise, but you cannot eat from the tree of knowledge, lest you shall die. So in other words, what God said is, eat all the fruit you want, just not from that particular tree, because if you eat that fruit, you will die. So what happens? A serpent comes along and starts convincing Eve to eat one of the apples from the tree of knowledge. And Eve says to the serpent, who is supposed to be the devil or Satan, says, well, I can't eat from the tree of uh, knowledge because God said I will die. And the snake said, no, you will not die. She ate the apple. She didn't die. Think about that. That means the supposed whatever God that said 
you are forbidden to eat from the tree of knowledge, lest you shall die. When she ate from the tree, because the snake said, no, you won't die. When she bit into the apple, she didn't die. So that means the person that told her originally lied. And the snake, who is supposed to be Satan, told the truth and said, you can eat from that apple, you won't die. And then they got cast out of heaven. Think about that. The snake, which is supposed to be the serpent, which is supposed to be portrayed as Satan, is the one that told the truth, while the one that said they were God lied. Now, is God supposed to lie to his creation? And if you think about it, if you know anything about the whole Bible story of Satan, Satan was God's first angel, and he was jealous of man. And Satan had the ego of wanting to be God. So wouldn't that make more sense that if there was that Satan, that he was the one that would lie? And that the real God was actually the snake trying to say, no, you won't die? The other person that told you that is a liar? Read it yourself and see. So, I am not trying to ruin somebody's life. These things are what keeps us under control. Because if you think about religion, if you think of it from an enemy standpoint, what better way to get people to self-discipline themselves, and not only self-discipline themselves, but control other people by focusing on, well, if you're good, you'll be rewarded when you die. And if you're bad, you will be punished. But yet, we see how many politicians, they say they believe in God, how many of them start wars, how many of them steal, how many people, how many of them commit adultery. I mean, you think about it. If religion meant that God will punish you for a lifetime, of, for any kind of sins to an eternity in hell, and if that was a fact, think of this logically, not emotionally. If you were a priest, if you were a politician, if you were the people that are supposedly in the know, and knew that if you did all these sins, you would spend all eternity in a fiery pit of hell, would you do all the things corruptible that they're doing, and have been doing for thousands of years? Who starts all the wars? How many priests have you seen caught trying to molest children? It's almost to a point where it's a joke with comedians. You know, you say cops and donuts, you say priests and little boys. Well, if, if they believed in the very thing they preach about, why would they even stop to think about doing that? Because they know that if, as soon as they do it, they would be cast into a fiery pit of hell, according to what they believe in. Or maybe they don't practice what they preach because they know better or they know different than they tell the masses. And it's a, maybe it's a form of control. Because they get away, politicians and the priests, all these people that do corrupt stuff. I'm not talking about everyone, but we know that there are corrupt politicians and there are corrupt people in the Catholic, in any of the priesthoods. And they take advantage. Well, if a priest sins, all they have to do is say, oh, well, forgive me. Same thing with a politician. They say, oh, just forgive me. I sinned. I, I fell off the beaten path. So they continue to steal from us. They continue to send our children to death when it comes to wars. They continue to put us in prisons and condemn us while they walk around with all this money. I mean, how wealthy is the Vatican? How wealthy are these churches with all these stained glass windows and these Michelangelo paintings? Do you think they got that for free? Without all the gold they've stolen from people. And what better way to keep people from saying, wait a minute. They're making all these rules. They're putting us in prison. They're starting all the wars. They're stealing all our money. They're creating all these sins. We have to stop them. Well, they've gotten us to say, wait a minute, I can't do anything bad because then I'll sin. Then God will punish me. So you regulate yourself and allow them to continue to steal from you. Con continue to create wars and destruction. Self-regulating. So while they're up, laugh, up there laughing, counting your money, you're sitting there protecting the very people that have corrupted and enslaved us. I want you to think about that. Think of it like the whole Santa Claus, which, by the way, if you look up Saint Nick, in the uh, Middle Ages, Saint Nick was the definition for the devil. And he used to go around, there were two 
there was the good God and there was this Saint Nick that would go around and beat the bad children with a stick. And he was looked as upon as a demon. You ever look up Saint Nick's beer? It has a symbol of the devil. The mascot is the devil. So people have to understand this stuff. I'm not trying to make people angry. I'm not trying to do anything other than saying, I once was blind, but now I see. And forgive them, for they know not what they do. And the path to, to hell is paved in good intention. I care about everybody. I may not say things perfectly. I may not do everything perfectly. I might not have the best personality or the best looks or whatever. But I am very sincere in my effort to try and help people see their own enslavement that's right before them. And how you that are very religious to the point where you will hate somebody like me and judge somebody like me and say things like, I will burn in hell. I still love you. I still care about you. And I'm trying to help you see that you're protecting the very people that have enslaved you. Because everything that you've learned has been told to you. Whether you want to understand that or not, when it comes to a God, when it comes to a Jesus, when it comes to the Bible, you weren't born with a Bible attached to you that was written in the heavens. Just personally for you, all of a sudden a laser came out of the sky and wrote this particular book and said, that's your book. You were given it to you by man who is easily corruptible. This is not something that is up for debate. And the powers that be, the ones that are stealing from us, the ones that are starting all the wars, they don't want people to revolt and stop them from what they're doing. So they've created the religion to make you check yourself. And there will be people who will want to injure me or be mad at me or wish harmful things on me that are supposed to be religious. And if you think about what God really is, it's a singularity. One consciousness, the one spectrum of light, because light moves at 186,400 miles per second, which gives the illusion of it being everywhere. Now they say God is everything, God is everywhere. Well, if you went to a racetrack that's a mile long, and you had a race car that could travel the speed of light, when you snap your finger and count it to one, it will have went around that mile track 186,400 times which is so fast it would look like it's everywhere on the track. I mean, look at a house fan. That thing's going pretty darn slow, but yet when it's spinning, you don't, you can't really see the three or four blades. They start looking solid. And that's moving at what? 25, 30 miles an hour at best? Maybe 40 miles an hour? Just imagine 186,400 miles an hour. It would look solid. It would be faster than your eyes can see movement. It would look like the blades are everywhere. Well, if you think about that from a scientific standpoint, isn't that what the whole thing about when they talk about God is? Is nothing more than a singular consciousness made of light? And we are made in that image. In other words, we're light beings. And light can never die. It can only transcend. And there are different levels of it. That's why you can't see microwaves. That's why you can't see ultraviolet rays. You can't see radio waves. They're on a different spectrum. That's why you only can hear a certain amount and see a certain amount. According to the universe, we're pretty much blind. There are so many things out there that our eyes cannot see. And we take for granted, and people have programmed us to believe that if something's not there, we can't believe in it. So they take a God, an idea, a, a thing that can create peace, because the true basis of all religions is about love. It's about loving thy neighbor, honoring thy father, being good to one another. So how did all the wars in the name of God come into it? What about all the hatred and all the judgment? You know, he who is without sin may cast the first stone. People think they're so religious, and yet they're so judgmental. If you have nothing but love in your heart, then you've found the real reason of spiritualism. But they've converted into a commercial idea to sell you a product. 
and they made God into a bearded white man who sits on a cloud, who says he's unconditionally full of love, but if you eat meat on a Friday, you burn in hell for all eternity? They're trapping you into think regulating yourself. In other words, if you're a good little soldier, if you're a good little slave, you do what you're told without question, and you don't try and stop the people from stealing from you and beating you down and putting you in jail and sending your kids off to war to die. Well, if you be a good little slave and pay all your taxes and give us part of your money and do what we tell you, well, when you're dead and no longer of this earth, we'll reward you with a nice little section of clouds in the sky that we call heaven. And if you're bad, in other words, if you don't do what we tell you, if you question our your faith, then, then you're going to go into a fiery pit of hell. But God still loves you. They've commercialized it, just like they do everything. It's all about money, control, power, and fear, and regulation. Only they haven't, they've mastered it. They don't have to send out soldiers to keep you in line. We're all doing it to ourselves. Because how many people have actually watched to this end? And if you've watched this, um, say, Chris, I've watched it this far. There you go. I don't want to get into anything that makes somebody say something they don't believe in. So, think about those symbols that I told you about. Somebody asked me why the symbol for Jesus has the same symbol as Saturn, with the halo around it and the, he the hexagram on top. They're not talking about Satan a person. It's symbolism for misunderstanding what the words really mean. Son of God, they're talking about the actual sun. We're all made of light. Well, what are we made of? Stars? You ever hear of a star child? And we're made of stars because when a super, supernova explodes, it creates planets and creates the life on those planets. So if you think of it from a science scientific point of view, you ever wonder why our, we call our kids youngsters or young stars? Why do you think even the Robin Williams, when he died, look at the tweet that his, um, his daughter wrote, said, you are now a star in the sky? Maybe they know a little bit more than the average person. Maybe that's why the Vatican, which is his own country, has secret underground chambers full of thousands of years of knowledge that you're not allowed to see. Anyone ever ask why? Anybody want to know what that stuff is? Why are they not sharing with the world? Why did the popes look the other way in World War II, in Vietnam, and Korea, and all the other wars? Maybe they had a part in it. Anybody ever remember that in 2011, when the Vatican got shut down because they were caught with uh, they, their credit card, com uh, credit card ability got shut down at the Vatican because they were caught laundering drug money? Look it up. That's a fact. It was either 2011 or 2012. They actually denied, the banks denied the Vatican from, so when people went to the Vatican, they couldn't use their credit cards because they were using that money to launder drug money. They got caught doing it. And most of you probably never even heard about that. So it's the whole do as I say and not as I do. And you will hate the people like me who are trying to save you from your enslavement that's right in front of you. If you want to believe that God is a bearded man that judges you, but supposedly loves you unconditionally, please explain to me how that makes sense. Does anyone not understand what the word unconditional love means? It means loving without condition. So if God is unconditional love, then it wouldn't matter what you did. There would be no punishment because it's unconditional. If you add a condition, then it is no longer unconditional. It's not, God unconditionally loves you unless you eat meat on a Friday. Which, by the way, you might laugh at that. That actually was a, a sin that you could be punishable and burn in hell in. How many priests have been found to be homosexual? How many politicians have been found to be homosexual? Well, if they supposedly know, especially the priests, if they know that that would have them sent to a fiery pit of hell. Do you think it would be worth doing? You would be able to hide it from an all-seeing God, according to them. 
but they want it to be do as I say and not as I do. That's like you have a parent when you're a kid, they put you on your knee and say, they tell you all about how you shouldn't smoke while they have a cigar in their mouth. You can believe whatever you want. You can choose to get angry at me for making this video and showing you things that maybe you need to hear about. Because I don't know if I said it before and I'm going to say it now just in case, because sometimes I go on a tangent and I forget some of the things that I say. Is when you say the word amen, you are actually worshiping the sun god, Amun-Ra. Amun, amen. So when people are preaching in church and they tell you to say amen, you may not realize it, but you are actually praying to the Egyptian sun god, Amun-Ra. If you look at the hat of the Pope, it looks from this way, but if you look at it from the side, it looks like this. Well, if, I forget the name of the Babylonian god, but there is a Babylonian fish god. I forget his name, but has that same exact symbolism as the hat that the Pope wears. It's a symbolism of the fish. You know, Pisces? And if you look at a lot of the symbolism in churches, you'll always see a, a pine cone. Well, the pine cone is a symbol for your pineal gland, your third eye. That's in the temple. The angel's wings. If you look at the brain from the top scan for where the pineal, pineal gland is, it looks like two wings. I once was blind, but now I see. So if you want to condemn me for trying to help you, that is your choice. But then I question how religious you are. Less, you know, not judge lest you be judged or something to that. I don't have every quote. So if you don't like what I've said and you're very religious, then forgive me. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. I can't wait to see the comments. Peace.